In this video, we're taking a look at combinations and probability. The first section, we're looking at selecting a specific number of items from a distinct group. Our scenario is that a class has 18 boys and 14 girls. A. In how many ways can a study group of 6 be selected? What we know is that 18 boys and 14 girls gives us a class size of 32. Therefore, of 32 students, we want to choose 6 of them to form the group. We have 32 factorial divided by 26 factorial and 6 factorial. This gives us a total of 906,192. So the number of ways we can form a study group of 6 is 906,192. In B we're asked, in how many ways can a study group of 3 girls and 2 boys be selected? Here we need the fundamental counting principle where we select girls and then we select two boys. So of our 14 girls we need to choose three and of the 18 boys we need to choose two. We'll have 14 factorial over 11 factorial times 3 factorial and 18 factorial over 16 factorial 2 factorial. This gives us 364 times 153 for a total of 55,692 combinations of three girls and two boys. Finally, C. What is the probability of a study group of six having two girls and four boys? This is a probability question. We need to count two different things. First is the sample set, the number of groups that have six people involved. Thankfully, we've already done that part in A. The answer is 906,192. Now we're interested in the number that have two girls and four boys. And again, this will use the fundamental counting principle. Of 14 girls, choose two of them. And of 18 boys, choose four. We have our 14 factorial over 12 factorial. 2 factorial times 18 factorial or 14 factorial and 4 factorial. Once we're done evaluating both of these, multiplying them out, we have 278,460 combinations. Therefore the probability of two girls and four boys is 278,460 divided by 906,192, which is approximately 0 0.3073. Therefore, the probability of a study group having two girls and four boys is about 30.73%. Let's look at another way of combinations. The second set of combinations is selecting a specific number of items from a distinct group by cases or by using the complement. If a movie is going to have three songs, and the director has the option from three classical songs, two swing songs, and three jazz songs, if the movie has to have at least one jazz song, how many combinations can be used? First, we're going to count this by cases. Coming up with our cases can be a little tricky, but we know there has to be at least one jazz song. We can meet that requirement by having exactly one jazz song. The second case if we have exactly two jazz songs, we still have at least one jazz song. Finally, if we choose all three to be jazz songs, we'll still have met the requirement of having at least one jazz song. can't have any more than three songs, and we can't have zero jazz songs because we have to have at least one. These are the three distinct cases. If we count each and sum them up, this will be how many ways that we can have three songs involving at least one jazz. So, the specific count now of one jazz song. There are three jazz songs, choose one. And now from the remaining five songs, choose two of them. For the two jazz song, there are three jazz songs, choose two of them. And of the five non-jazz songs, choose one. Finally, of the three jazz songs, choose three songs. We'll have three 
times 10 plus 3 times 5 plus 1. And that's after having evaluated these expressions. We find that we have 46 combinations that involve at least one jazz song. Now we could look at the, the complement. The number with at least one jazz song would be equal to the total number of three songs. Subtract the complement of at least one jazz song, which is having no jazz songs. There are a total of eight songs that the director can pick from. Of eight, the director wants to choose three of them. This is the total ways you can select three songs with no restrictions. Now we impose the restrictions for the complement that there are no jazz songs available. That would be the other five songs. We want to choose all three of them to be from that area. We have eight factorial, or six factorial, two factorial, minus, 5 factorial over 2 factorial, 3 factorial. Evaluating these, we have 56 subtract 10, which is our 46. Counting by the complement and counting by cases gave us the same answer. They work together in the same type of scenarios. The question is whether we can come up with the complement to do this slightly easier method. If we can't, we can always go out by cases and count the individual cases and then add them all up together. Let's take a look at a third section for combinations. Here we're looking at the number of total combinations from a distinct group. So we can tell the difference between all the objects, but it's no longer specified how many we're selecting. A class has 18 boys and 14 girls. So we have a total class size of 32. The teacher is going to create a study group. A. How many different ways can this be done? For each student in the class, they're either put into the study group or they're not. That's two choices for each student. That leads us towards 2 to the power of 32 different combinations. However, this includes when the teacher creates a study group that has nobody in it. But we're told that the teacher is going to create a study group, so that doesn't make any sense. We'll subtract 1 to, cr to correct this count. We end up with a total of 4 billion. 294,967,295 combinations. For B, how many study groups have Jack and Jill? What we're going to do is, here's the class of 32. We remove Jack and Jill, so we have 30 students left in the class. We're interested in finding out how many combinations, how many different study groups can be made from 30 students now. That is 2 to the power of 30 or 1 billion 73 million 741,000 and 824. Notice here we're not subtracting 1. The reason is that the empty set here where the teacher doesn't put any one of the 30 students in it has Jack and Jill so it isn't empty. We don't need to subtract the 1 from this. So the number of study groups that have Jack and Jill is 1,073,741,824. We have one more type of combination to look at. Finally, we look at the number of total combinations from a group with non-distinct items, where I can't tell the difference between some of the people or some of the objects in the group we're selecting from. An artist is going to paint a still-life picture of fruit. In the artist's fruit bowl, she finds three apples, four oranges, six bananas, and two mangoes. Now let's assume that you can't tell the difference between the apples, the oranges, or the bananas, and the mangoes once they're all mixed up. A. We're asked, how many different still life paintings can she paint? So we're interested in the number of choices of the apples, and the number of choices for the oranges, and the number of choices for bananas, and the number of choices of mangoes. I could include 0, 1, 2, or 3 apples. I have 4 choices. I have 5 for the oranges, 7 for the bananas, and 3 for the mangoes. But it's possible that I take no apples, no oranges, no bananas, no mangoes in this combination. 
So I need to subtract 1 because I know the artist is going to paint something. There has to be something there to paint. In the end, we calculate this out to be 419 combinations. So we have 419 different paintings for that artist. B. What is the probability? Which means we need to find two things, the sample set and the event we're interested in. The event we're interested in is a painting with at least one apple. We already have the sample set. It's 419. That's how many different paintings are possible. Now we want to know the ones that have at least one apple. We can count this by cases, by the complement, or through some thought. If we count it by cases, we can have one apple, we can have two apples, or we can have three apples. Adding these cases will tell us how many ways have at least one apple. There's one choice for the apple, namely I put the one apple in, five for the oranges, seven for the bananas, and three for the mangoes. I don't need to subtract one here because I'm definitely having an apple. Similarly, one choice for two apples, five choice for the oranges, seven for the bananas, three for the mangoes, and again, one choice for three apples, five for the oranges, seven for the bananas, three for the mangoes. When I tally this up, I have 315 combinations that involve at least one apple. I could count by the complement. Here I'm looking for the number that have no apples involved. So I have five choices for the oranges, seven for the bananas, two for the mangoes, and I subtract one for the case where I have none of them involved. Here we have a total of, sorry I made a mistake, there are three choices for the mangoes, not two. Multiplying this out, we have 104 combinations that involve no apples. Therefore, the number that have at least one apple is 419 minus the 104, which gives us the 315. The last way I could count this is by thinking about the number of choices. If I'm not allowed to have less than one apple, I can either have one apple, two apples, or three apples. I have three choices for my apples, but I'm going to have an apple for sure in this count. Then, five choices for the oranges, seven for the bananas, and three for the mango. I don't need to subtract one because this count involves at least one apple. And here, when I multiply this out, I get 315 again. Three ways of counting, each of them giving me the same answer. Therefore, the probability of at least one apple is 315 over 419, or approximately 0.752. So about 75% probability that the artist will paint a painting with at least one apple.